I. Well, according to this, we are living now on, right. on the net. Our presence is being broadcast. Well, assuming the microphone's working. We've got anywhere the trouble is we've got to have a photo way of monitoring it, otherwise you can't. See, I've got a filter on that. Thank you. 
Get on the train! <laughs> the train of thought, which has brought everything up out of the ground. Just like a seed that you planted. Not everything that goes fast like a virus is fast. Slow down the path. To the top of the ice cream slope. Increase your scope, meditate on the matter. We're getting fatter and fatter digitally, it's not much better. Mm. Mm. Slow, like he you know, goes like a snail. Through a lettuce.
Canada. Oh yeah, how's it going, Canada? No, no, no. I'm actually enjoying the lot being near the fire. Oh. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hey, oh, we've got an extra viewer. Keep it? playing. Who is it? Quick, Sam. Come in. Build it and they will come. Spanish? What? Lisa needs braces. <laughs> <laughs> How does this work then? What do you pro oh yeah. Oh god. That sounds great. It sounded good. <laughs> you just have to do the lyrics. I've just oh, got it. Uh, I like the look at the fire in this filter on that. Looks like some monster in the background. Oh wow. What is that? Well this is this is us in here. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. Briefly we did have a few viewers, but we're back down to one again. Does anybody want a cup of tea or anything? I'll, I'll have another little dress I can go. Oh yeah, okay, let me show you the Thank mm -hmm. you. 
trying to get stuff that will you know fit in a small space uh, and just having a lot of fun with oh sorry in an old okay, Nokia great. N95 uh, phone oh, yeah. with, with just some uh, samples that have sort of you know stretched the uh, you know next to play from that so yeah it's yeah, a nice one portable I feel like I should be chucking something on it. Um, yeah, in fact, there's usually a basket outside the door with extra nutting. Let's see what's in here. Kids music box with the um, with the punch the punch uh, punch hole paper you know like an automatic piano music box style yeah but then there was one that they've done that um, you basically can control it by MIDI I don't know how much it is I expect it to be expensive it's one of those things that's not really worth sort of fucking around with unless it's sort of it's fairly cheap, but yeah, yeah. Look, I, I sort of, I've been looking for one for ages. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a feel be to yeah, yes. beat the fire. Oh, Sam will yeah. be it. Sam will be but good. yeah, there's um, yeah. Thank you. 
that's too much. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going back. I do a lot of stuff on my phone now, just because when I was in Mexico. That, that sounded great. Yeah, so what, what apps were they then? One's called uh, Ko uh, Koala, and the other one's Koala. called Nanoloop, which is based on... Um, there's one you can get for Game Boy back in the day. It's the car yeah. you can do make tunes on. They, they put the app out for iPhone years ago, but it's good. Yeah. It's good, because you can just... Do you know the best thing about it? You can, you can, um, you can speed it up. Do you know normally on programs you can only speed things up to like 200 BPM or something like that? Okay. On this app, you can. It's ridiculous. Look. There we go. That's a 32 BPM. Yeah, let's see. Wow. Okay. Just... Yeah. Okay. You're gonna get some laptop. You can start to. Put samples in there as well. And then Koala, this other one. It's got some recordings of Amelia already. That's just the mic bringing back into itself. That's great. It's good for like feedback. It's a really worthwhile app to get. Wow. It's, so does it go to, is there an Android version? Uh, yeah. Right, so yeah. And, it's Koala, and that one's Koala. Koala, yeah. Koala. It's good. It's a good little, good little sample. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, only just, I've just got that, and then that's, that's the sense that I use on it. And I also have... Um, FL Studio on Fruit Loops on, on the phone as well, a very basic version. Yeah, I don't know what FL Studio is. It's just, um, well, it was a, a DAW for a bit for the computer, so it was a full system of making tunes. But yeah, it's okay. a very stripped down version. It's, yeah. It has a sequencer and do loads of different layers. And it's not as fun as the, it's not as fun as Koala and yeah. Nano Loop. That's, yeah. that's really good. Um, I'll tell you what, you would absolutely love. You would, you would get a lot out of it. it is, um, a setup like this. Let me show you. It's, it's the hardware version of Nano Loop. It's only, it's about that big. Right. It's, 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 it's the, the, the synth that they used, that was the drive behind all the classic games consoles. Okay. It's called, um, is that the one? That's Koala, yeah. Koala. Yeah. But have a look at the um, hardware version of Nano Loop. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's... Hi, Sue, what's happening? What's going on? Oh! Hello. 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 Well, I say you've lost. We did go up to three viewers. Oh, wow. I oh, know, it's back down to uh, just me. You can miss our line, 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 Something about the sun, buying the sun. What's that? What's that? What's that? She's on the toilet. Well, we were just chatting in the kitchen. I think she's going to go in the loo. She's what? I think she's gone to the loo. Yeah. Yeah, we were just discussing uh, TikTok and YouTube. So. Yes. I mean, that idea of the algorithm, it is fun. I think, I mean, there is a sort of a living force uh, already, you know. Yeah. 
the singularity passed from him making in the first Casio home keyboard. <laughs> Actually, they didn't realise it. I'm still looking for it and trying to create like this super monster uh, robot, but actually, it's already it's here. already out there, stalking between the oak trees, if you please. Well, the fire's going on, right? Yeah, Oh! The black fire. When you have a reverse filter on it, amazing how black the fire looks as well. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like a monster. Did you see that uh, Yusef and Gavin have released that album finally? Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, I've got one. I've got, I've got, actually, it's funny because I've been doing one, put on Bandcamp, and I was going to do it, and then I got that. So I've delayed mine a bit. Yeah. Mine's called Anti-Vex. 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 Questions are not conspiracies. Can fill my water room. I think that's a good title or not. Yeah. Yeah. It'll attract the right sort of attention. Yeah. What do you think? I'm sort of uh, Siamian and death one. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Questions are not the same as, like, criticism. You know. You've got to keep, keep that idea alive, but we don't have to question things. That's the most sort of dangerous thing. People stop questioning, and then... Yeah, yeah. You know, they're going to get lost, basically. Yeah, not questioning is much worse than questioning. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... You know, if you don't... I mean, imagine if nobody had ever questioned anything. We'd still be, like, living in the ground like a worm, you know. Yeah. You know, you, progress only happens by questioning, you know, like the weather. You don't just die of cold. You know. we learn how to sort of knit a woolly jumper. You know. You've got to keep questioning things. There is this sort of idea that you shan't, you know, you can't, or you're going to be sort of switched off, you know, like a machine or something. It's not right. You know. Well, we're not very really healthy, you know. This is lovely. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to have a go on the, uh, the setup? The little, I think it's got a light on right, nice little tall thing. Have a little go. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just sit around with it. Yeah, there's some then. Um, yeah, on this on this old phone, uh, there's just yeah, just some you know, manipulated samples and stuff. So you can scroll through there, and then uh, that's going direct through the speakers, and then there's a tape recorder. Uh, you can make it go switch size at the flip of the switch. Um, and at the minute, there's like I'm using the volume knob on there to feed things through the monitor on the lake, but just just play. Nothing, oh, nothing oh, okay, yeah. yeah. You'll have a go, show me. Show me what you do. You, no, you have a go. I'll show you. Oh, did I
Got it. Mm. She's out of the controls. <laughs> 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 Change the you can change the levels of the the, thing, the channels on here so you can hear which you know pull that you can if you move it up and down you'll hear which channels which. So that's the tape recorder and that's the phone. Yeah, it's the phone. It's just like pulled together from, um, you know, here and there. But I wanted it to be like small and portable. That's uh, really yeah, cool. A little mixer just helps bring it all together. I've never, that's probably the smallest mixer I've ever seen. Is it? Is, is it, it just um, uh, just, mini? Is it just mini jack? Yeah. That's amazing. Three, yeah, three mini jack. Who makes that? On one apple. Uh, Hart, H A R T. I don't know if it stands for right. Right. Okay. Internet jobby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they, they make a few different, um, you know, music, music related things. But yeah, because it's like, um, you can mini USB power it. Yeah. 
um, or two AAA batteries. But yeah, it's just makes it portable. Dicks. AAA. Assembling the Bratz Doll Orchestra. Oh, hello. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I remember this guy. <laughs> can't actually really see Sam you're not really coming through on the thing it's a uh, it's a uh... yeah Wilbur Sook that's someone that came up in the um, in the uh you know, in the, in the research, kids' research, right. that name came up a lot, Wilbur Sucked. No, uh, really? Yeah. This is what your kids go on. I don't know. I mean, that's just, no, they don't use that one. So oh, that's, re that's just recommended. Yeah. Night works. Oh, yeah. It's a... I always enjoy doing this, feeding yeah, back into a little, itself. A little bit of uh, a delay in that. I have to do it with a video camera at home. So oh, yeah? Good. You know, when you plug the video camera into the TV and then mm. point at the TV mm. and it's like, what is going yeah. on? What is yeah. that? In oh, yeah. What are you? That's very good. Should I have a go on the camera? Mm. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, first of all, take off your highly flammable jacket. Okay. <laughs> log it up, miss. Log in. Put your log in. Have you entered your login details? Thank <laughs> you. 
So we have the slides going. What well, we do when we do it, we put slide a slideshow as well. Yeah. You got a, a projector. Hmm. Well, a slide projector, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's on the ground. Um, we, we went through them all in Scotland again. And Mark has identified some of his uh, uncles and grandmas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we do, yeah, we do scans of that. We have not good about that. Oh, Vicky. I'll get in touch with her and uh, make sure she's calm. So I'll go snap all the way into her body. Well, just so I don't forget about it. Yeah. There was one, but I think the kids were playing with it. Probably, one the other probably in the garden. Or <laughs> Might have one in the other room, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Imagine the rain is like a house with the rooms. Rain is like a house with the rumours. Full of different rooms. Could you like take someone around the whole brain with one sort of like thing in it? Part of them. Ah, oh, Poke World. Mm. Which one is that? Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's the dirty end. On the dirty end, yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
person to burn their dick in the fire. <laughs> I don't know, you would feel resistance getting closer to it, even if you didn't know what it was, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd, yeah. you'd be like, I don't know. Yeah, you would, yeah. Your, your nerves tell you. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Your nerves know what fire is before it's even created. That is weird, isn't it? Well, yeah. You're, you're set up to be... Like, you were, you were fireproofed. You've got memory from the volcanic period, to be honest. Yeah. It's part of our brains, right? Very, I mean, you know, bits of our brain are very primitive, still like some animals. Yeah. Like, you know, I think again, you know, evolution is pushing us back into that binary thinking like a reptile. Yeah. Right. Food or meat, that's all they, you know, they don't have any other conception beyond that. Yeah. And like this idea of being a consumer, it's like we're being domesticated. Yeah, that's true. We just well, consume. In a, in a technological, like a technological reptile. Yeah, yeah. well, we're like, like, it's like the matrix of being sort of mind somehow. Yeah. It's sort of like a parasite, it's something much greater than us. It's just still sucking our blood like a fucking machine. We've got to tame it like a dog. Use some smaller sticks. <laughs> Take it before it eats us. It's like a dog, if you didn't tame a dog. Yeah. Might probably try and feed the leg of it. Oh, I've got to tame the internet. It's like a wild animal. That is true. I don't want to, otherwise, it'll eat us. <laughs> Oh, 
right, let's go back into the madness. Just a bit. He looks playing with fire. I was just going to offer to give it a blow in, but that's fine. So just... Hmm. 
It's quite entertaining. How many voices? Two. Three. Two. Well, well it's like two. Sounds like three. You've got the filter as well. And the LFO. I don't know, it might have frequency, it might have all sorts on it really, because sort of, look at the names of the different books on Or like the wacky bit and the even wackier bit. On this side, it's fun. It's fun. Have a go.
past half season. Is this all you got earlier than Millionaire's Christmas Supper? What did you get? You got something similar. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's sort of weird now. It's like I was saying about his kids made a little video on TikTok. And Well, it's like a kind of weird idea where you can make a little video and put it up and then people can watch it after. What do you think of NFTs, then? What's that? NFTs. Ah. They're like uh, people, there's like you, you sell the rights to like a GIF image and people sell them for like millions. I'll send you some stuff on it, you probably find all that quite quite interesting. It's ridiculous. It's, right. mad, it's maddening, but NFTs. You know about NFTs, don't you? You. Like someone will sell like a well, how do you claim your own NFT like, um, You Well, anyone can make them but there's certain platforms that they're sold on which are a bit like art galleries. Right. And you need an invite. Mm. Mm. It, it is a little bit, but there's a lot of different people that get to do it, and um, yeah, I mean, I'll send, I'll send you some stuff on it because you probably find it interesting. Oh yeah, well, I've never made. I have made it. Yeah, it's a bit boring, though. They can't answer it. Can't really Well, it, it's like, I, from my understanding, I don't know um, if you can correct me, Alex, it's, it's like, you know, like an authorised reproduction of a famous painting, you know, number 12 out of 100. It's, well, it's the equivalent of that, you've got an authorised copy, um, you know, of a, uh, you know, digital copy of something. It could be, it could be, an NFT can be anything though, it can be like yeah. an album, it can be a... Uh... Yeah. Um, what happens if you get it wrong, is it a case of N NFA? NFA. NFA. NFA, no fucking clue. <laughs> I've tried to, I've tried to like, 
So I know some people are involved in it, but it's, it's a bit. The impetus to do it is so small. The money is there, but it's just like. So, what is it like? NFT. Yeah. And what about Bitcoin? I've got a little bit. Have you been involved in Bitcoin? I've been. I have been involved in Bitcoin. I've got a little bit, but it, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a. Uh, what about shitcoin? Shitcoin? No, no shitcoins. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it's good stuff. I've lost. I've lost some money. And then got it back. Yeah. I've never made anything off it because I'm just shit at it. Right. But I've got like 500 quid at it. Yeah. Uh, I bought when it was pretty high, so it's just like a savings account. But yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit late. You know. It's like if I'd have got it two years ago, five years ago. Yeah. yeah I've got a little bit. You got any? Uh, no. I've just got a little bit. Just see some. I don't really understand. Yeah. No, I wouldn't advise doing it. I'm putting them in a bag upstairs. Yeah. Do what? I've got some in a bag upstairs. Nice. Have you? How much? How much you got? About two kilos. Two kilos of pig meat. Nice. Oh, chocolate meat. That'll be the next thing on Christmas Black Hotel. You know, while they do like impressions of like uh, real currency on those chocolate coins. Yeah. Like bitcoins. Chocolate bitcoins? Yeah. yeah. Chocolate bitcoins. Oh, that reminds me. Put some, cho put some chocolate in that. Sounds like the type of a trap. Chocolate bitcoins. Mm. Not quite as good as your. Was it? Love us, 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 So you got like a pod, like a brown or yellow pod, and it's got these like seeds in it. And the seeds have a pulp around the edge. 
And so you ferment, f ferment it. You can ferment it in the pot. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah. And then what you're left with, you wash off the stuff, and you've got this like purple, right, nib, cow, bean, a bean. And um, you can eat it like that. It's a bit, a bit bitter, isn't it? It's quite nice though, you can still do it. It doesn't taste anything like chocolate. That's very, um, Right. But then when you roasted it, it's a bit more like, you get, you're like, yeah, I can see where dark chocolate comes from. And then you mix it with sugar, and the more sugar you mix it with, you're like, that's, like, mm -hmm. that's closer. Mm -hmm. And if you mix it with milk, with dairy, and that's milk. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it would taste like... It would taste like that if you mixed it with condensed milk. Ah, oh, wouldn't it? Yeah, chocolate is something that I've noticed. Chocolate really is really good. Fucking really, really good. Anywhere in the UK, in America. Chocolate compared to America, oh, or really? the chocolate we get in Mexico. It's better here. Like the, the packets of chocolate is way better than here. Yeah, it's better. Over in Mexico, this place is really found the cacao. Yeah, the right. the the chocolate comes from Mexico as well. Like these people, they do chocolate in a traditional way. They even buy tablets of chocolate and just add it to your literal boiling milk. Bless you. There's a lot of sugar. really milky, delicious chocolate. I've got a cacao, yeah. I've got, we got cacao nibs in nothing. I just didn't know how to ferment it though. I mean, that's amazing because so many things are really good that they're fermented yeah, yeah it's, it's coffee yeah. coffee yeah not all not always but depends whether it's a natural or a well it's roast isn't it yeah, fermented. yeah yeah before the before the roasting really and there's many many different ways to to ferment coffee as well wow. i had a white yeah. wine fermented coffee recently do you remember that one yeah there's lactic processes. So, that, so, I mean, the two general types you get are natural or washed, where, because you know coffee is a fruit. Yeah, when they're drying, true. they leave the pulp on, so that's a natural. When it's washed, they wash all the pulp off it. Right. So, so you get the fruit, and inside you get a green bean, and then you, then you roast the bean, and obviously, oh. and the more, the closer you get to, uh, you know, the darker you get, the less of the characteristics you get of the bean. Right. French French roast on the, on the third crack of the roast on the first one mm. that's when it's a lighter one it's where you're going to get more of the characteristics characteristics of the actual fruit you know you're going to because I know if you the walnuts if you, if you let them dry walnuts in their shell yeah you get a much better flavour if you take the shell off yeah you know, like the green bit yeah if you take it off straight away that's what people do yeah they dry better but you don't get as much flavour well I had a fruit, I had a coffee recently, a filter coffee, um, that was a natural uh, fermented one. It was a Colombian one, wasn't it? Yeah. And it tasted like very, very ripe strawberries. Oh, yeah. And chocolate. <laughs> it was wow. insane. I'll, I'll tell you what, I really like coffee. So next time I come, I'll bring you some like mad coffee. We got, oh, yeah. we got some really good roasteries near us. Like you can get, you can get stuff that it's just coffee. It's not had anything added to it, but the pro, the way they fermented it, or the way they roasted it, you can get an espresso. Trust me, an espresso that will be strong, you know, a strong black espresso, but it will taste exactly like, you know, for somehow it will taste like a strawberry milkshake, or somehow it will taste like marshmallow, or somehow it will taste like vanilla ice cream, but but. There's no, there's no artificial stuff anywhere near it. It's just the wow. way that they've, the way that they've fermented it. Oh, wow. Because yeah, it's fruit, obviously. So yeah. you can get, you can get. I had, a, I had one, I had one recently that just tasted of, of pig size. <laughs> it was just, it just tasted, of, it was just so f fermented and funky and like it had that like manure-y but it was the lint. But it was no. Was it not? It was. It was amazing. But like when you the notes were like it's like manure. But 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 that sweet. You know the sweetness. It's like yeah. that, it, and it's nice. 
Yeah. The, those are the natural coffins, right? That's a natural, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the first time he gave it to one of those, that was just like this. She's like, fucking mad. You, <laughs> she, she, you got does, into it. You got into it recently. Crazy. Had one recently that was like white chocolate and banana. Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that yeah. was that was that was that was good. Really, really good. Oh, I'll have to go my own. It's in the uh, what are you talking about? In Mexico or in Nottingham? In Nottingham, yeah. In Nottingham. Nottingham. Stanton Market, yeah. Got, but um, there's one, the Stanton Market, Stanton Market, which is Stewart's. Those are a bit more tame. And then there's um, Kali, uh, Kigali. Kigali in the town centre. And they. Oh, I'd love to bring the kids over there. Mate, they sell some. Yeah, of course, yeah. And they sell um, some really good coffee. Crown Cows, that's the one that they got in as well. But they get a lot of guest coffees in. Yeah. You know, you pay more per bag, you know, I mean, a, a 250 gram bag of coffee in blend for, for filter coffee is eight quid. Nice. That seems expensive, but it's, it's, it's exquisite. It's amazing. And it's like, the reason, the reason you're paying more for it is because it's from a single estate. You know, they know where the coffee's from yeah. and how it's got to you is ethical you know rather than you go to the supermarket and like they do do mixed origin ones as well but they're cheaper but the yeah so the, so so you've got to be, so you're spending between 250 a bag and then I mean, I, you know i was talking to sam about this the other day i was just like you can go down a really deep rabbit hole and it's just unnecessary you know and just it becomes consumption ethical or not that doesn't matter and that's the problem isn't it you know it's like people that's a way to sell things, isn't it? It's a yeah. way to, it's like, oh, it's ethical, or it's rich sauce, or it's like, it's, you know, with alcohol as, as well, with spirits, with mezcal. Yeah. We have mezcal before. Um, it's like, it's made from the agave, it's like tequila. I like it. You don't like it? <laughs> no. I didn't, so it tastes like boots. Yeah. I, I was going to say, yeah, to be fair, I didn't have a sister in there. Yeah, but because uh, the other thing is, I know that. As a, uh, a kid, well, actually, until my twenties, I hated omelets. Yeah, and now me I, too. And I hated red wine. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, it is a food. Yeah, if you're anything like me, it is a persistent. Because when I first had it, I was like, I was like, this is especially the esp the the espadina. Yeah, the, it is isn't a bio taste. I know because the es no, it's the ensemble, isn't it? That's the, the one that tastes like a fucking boot. Just tastes like it's leather. Like, it's like drinking it's leather dude. spirits. Mm. Anyone that's really aged. I love it. But with the coffee, it's like you can spend between eight pounds for two fifty. In in outpost in that in Kigali, I seen one fifty for sixteen pounds. But when you taste the coffee, it's not you know it's not everyday coffee that you're just going to hammer out and not know it. No. You might have it every now and again. You might be like, hey, I've got this one within six weeks of the roast day. Obviously, that's what people say. When you get a, when you get a roasted coffee and it's been roasted four days before. The beans might be from Colombia or Ethiopia, but they're roasted locally. So it'll have a roast day. You leave that two weeks to let the oxygen come out of it. And then you, um, is it oxygen or carbon dioxide? It might be the CO2, wouldn't it? The carbon dioxide. Anyway, degas, you leave it for two. Two weeks for degas, and then you you consume it within that 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 period of two weeks as whole bean. So you have a whole bean and you grind it yourself. I mean, you got a hand grinder. Right. I've got a I had a hand grinder, but it broke. So I've got a, I've got quite a decent burr grinder that I use. I drink a lot of coffee, so I use a filter that I drink. Oh wow! But then because it's, it's the cheapest way to do it, it's like a dripper is like. Like 15 quid plastic cups, 15 quid, and then you just need a carafe, and then you just use the filter papers. But yeah, I mean, you you know that that one that Steve did, that was like, I don't know, he's selling out for like 16 quid for 150 grams, which seems ridiculous, but you taste it, and it's just like, you know, it's a, yeah. I spent I spent on a bag between a between I have like some lesser. I have ones that I have drink every day and then I have some more expensive ones yeah. a bit less yeah. regularly, which are like 12 quid, 12 quid a bag, which is still quite expensive. The more you get, the less it depends on how much coffee you drink. Yeah. Oh, definitely going to go and get some. Yeah. 
But we know that supermarket uh, next to Snanty Market, you know the big one. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah, yeah the, bl the blend is right opposite where it is. Right. It's literally, okay. that's the, that's the one. So they've got some, yeah. those ones are fair, they're, they're, those, are good for, those are good because they're fairly cheap. But if you want really funky coffee, Kigali, which is literally just up the hill in Stanton, on the on next to the old angel, yeah. right opposite the old angel, okay. where the fish and chip shop is, it's just opposite there. They've got some really really good ones, and you've got an espresso machine as well, so you're you are in you know flavour country really because you yeah. got, they do some really crazy espresso, like really good. Oh yeah, I'd love to get. You get it. You get it. If you drink a lot, if you drink a lot of coffee. Well, fair bit, yeah. If you, that, they can they can grind it for you as well. There. Right. For for what you use. So that, I've got a grinder thing. Yeah. But they, you know, if you say oh, I use what the one you want to grind for, they'll grind it for espresso. Mm -hmm. They'll grind it for mocha. I mean, I've got the grinder. Yeah. I've got a little grinder at home and that, so I just use that. Before I had it, I'd get them to. Yeah, that's grinding. And mm. oh, that's good for it. I mean, you want to drink that within four weeks, really. Yeah. Keep it. Never keep it in the fridge. Always keep it just sealed in there. So, so you can have it. Always brew with boiling water. That's what they say. Yeah. As hot water, hotter water as possible. There's a, there's a bit of a myth that if you, if you use really hot water, it burns it. But yeah, it's some, some, really, some really good coffee. Really, really good. And I, and I do like the Latin American stuff better than the better than the African stuff. I think I do like the Ethiopian. It's, it's obviously seasonal. We get a lot, of, but the last ones we got have been Latin, Latin America, haven't they? Colombia, and we got a Brazilian one. Haven't we? Yeah, yeah, I like the yeah the Peruvian, the Colombian. Uh, yeah, Peruvian's good as well. Somewhere in Central America. Guatemala. Guatemala. Yeah, yeah, that's good as well. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to go in go in Gainsborough. Gainsborough coffee. Well, there's a they, they they did an experiment, didn't they? They grew some coffee in Kew Gardens and then roasted it and then let people drink it. And it was. Uh, Pretty, pretty rank, I think. But, but do you know they're saying that if because India and China are tea consumers, if India and India and China cotton on to coffee, they start to drink it, we're screwed. We're screwed because yeah, they're massive markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Indian coffee as well is meant to be alright. They do they do some Indian coffee at that place too. Well it could grow things a lot better than they do. I mean so inefficient the way we sort of produce food. Mm -hmm. Fire guard, like that. Oh, okay, good, good, good. 
I think those people just never made a chocolate fire garden in their bloody lives. Andy's, Andy's ambient section. What about the chocolate kettle? Chocolate teapot, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think one day they'll make like chocolate mobile phones you can like use them for a bit. Do you remember them. those chocolate records? Do you, they existed. <laughs> I remember them as a kid. I remember seeing one somewhere. Yeah, they were they were chocolate and the the vinyl was print. It was like the grooves were on a um, foil on oh. the chocolate. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> I remember. Oh, I don't know where I would have seen one. It was, I thought it was a false memory, and then I googled it, and they exist. And I was like, where would I have seen that? Because my, my family definitely didn't have one. But maybe I went round someone's house once or something, or like it was definitely with my family. Like, well, it doesn't surprise you. It's like, I mean, people. But it sounds like oh, chocolate. You could actually, you could sort of sculpt a prime out of grooves. Yeah. You can't fuck it, but. <laughs> I really like just um, cacao and water. She doesn't like it that much, but it's quite common in Mexico. I don't think I'm what? It's I've not had cacao though. No. It's pretty. It's, I'll tell you what, you eat a handful of cacao nibs, it feels like you've done a line of coke. It's, it's mad. It's mad. <laughs> it's I've good. heard a lot about it. Yeah, yeah. theobromine. It's what tea's got in it. Do you know tea? Uh, green tea. It's got caffeine and it's got theobromine in Right. Theobromine is what's in chocolate. That's the stimulant in chocolate. Mm. So when you do, when you eat a load of beans, it's just like doing theobromine. So you're just like, Grr! good stuff. I bring, I bring some. Next time I come, I'll, we'll make some. What well, can you get it in Nottingham then? Yeah. Oh, I've got to come over. Yeah, I love bring the kids over. Yeah, they go. Not beans like. Yeah, places like not. Yeah. Yeah, so in a way it's quite good to, I mean it's quite nice to sort of take in places that really wouldn't want to go. Yeah, we've got the woods near us as well. We go, there we go, Sherman Forest. That, they love that. Well, we've got we've to the forest, but... It's like the shitty I've been to. Uh, I'm going School next to the fucking castle. Were you there? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember something about that. You've done one, haven't you? Well, I, don't, I can't remember if I did one there, but I've definitely done one like a festival or something. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Mm. You do it. Everyone does it. <laughs> yeah, the kids are always going off outside, exploring in their socks, and they think it's great fun to sort of go all the way to the wood in the socks. The trouble is, they're like completely wrecked the socks. 
Yeah. <laughs> and how can you reason with them? Like, I don't have to buy new socks all the time. Can you not do it? Just get some, get them some chainmail socks. Yeah, well, we do it. Well, pictures of unicorns. Well, you know, the fence sounds really beautiful out of its glory in the woods, which is really sort of Yeah, well, that's it. I kind of can't help but admire them a bit, but although then they come back as a trouble. Did you used to explore those woods in your socks? No, I used to put a pair of shoes on with them. I like to put on for them. We, we bought Possibly it. I did, I don't remember. We bought in the house. No, I was born in a play uh oh. <laughs> it was a big, big sign. <laughs> no, it was in one of the hospitals. Yeah. Is it called the practice of babies or green houses? Um the babies to be born in houses. Be born in houses. Sometimes. Like, is that called practice? It's um out, usually only by the mother's choice or will, I think, because the hospitals are worried about, you know, complications. They're far older you go as the hospital. Yeah, I mean, so, and if you are doing it at home, they'll, they'll, have, a, they'll have a nurse. Much better at home. I, I delivered Jemima on my own. Yeah, you yeah. delivered one of them here? There was no, the midwives came about an hour later after she was born. You delivered her? Yeah. I mean, and I had to, um, a hand was stuck inside, so I had to, <laughs> yeah, you know, hand it and get her out. But I'd done a lot of laminacy, so I knew what to do. Yeah. Because when you touch a lime into the field, and said, eat grass. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> and the midwives came. No, but it's, um, I was glad I'd done all the lamin, because, like, you know. I mean, was your hand stuck into the midwife, kid? Hmm? Was your hand stuck until the midwife came? Well, no, I said I delivered her. She kept, Jemima's hand was stuck in stuck inside and she couldn't get out. So I had oh, to right, that, push that, it back in a bit oh. and get the hand out. And then she came out and she was fine. I thought you meant your hand was stuck. By the time, um, no, by the time the midwife got there, she was like, you know, sleeping or something. It was so late. Yeah, so it's been painful for them. Wasn't it? She's like no painkillers at all. No, she wouldn't have painkillers anyway. No, it was all quite quick. Obviously, she was screaming and that. But uh, then there was a. Uh, I mean, the hospital, because Luc uh, Lucinda had to go into hospital. And it was terrible in there. They kept moving her around and it was crazy. It was much better at home. I mean, a lot of people do have that. Right, that's it. We're having it here in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what you're confident with, you know. I mean, Ruth was, didn't want to have it in hospital. Um, I'm the hospital and the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're <cowboy>. <laughs> 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 Yeah, because they kept trying to induce her as well. And she'd go into the hospital and say, I oh, will induce her. Because, you know, I think she, she's like, no, just do it normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come when it comes. Is yeah, that... well, there are, there are a lot of horror stories. My sister was very complicated. Um, Words. They don't have much. They don't seem to have much confidence in the woman's body to sort things out. They're very like, oh, you know, because I know there a lot of. It seems to be a lot of cesareans and things now where they just sort of, you know, they don't like trust that the body will do the right thing. Yeah. Because yeah. with Ruth, they were trying to induce it. In the sense, was she's only like two or three days later. Or something. And uh, they were trying to induce her to get to go in. Like really the the party. But then when she was <laughs> bored, she was fine. No problem. 
you know, it looks like they were really sort of panicking and just no point in it. It's the same as like, if you, I mean, I know from doing the sheep, I mean, if you put a lot of pressure on them when they're pregnant, they have a bad, you don't do very well. But if you let them be nice, really calm and happy, there's never any problem, you know. The way they were with Ruth, and they were really stressing her out. I mean, I had to take and bring her, you know, she was like, she went in for an appointment and they were saying, oh, you must get induced now. And she's like, no, I'm here to sort of have an appointment and have a, a scan. I'm not here to have a baby. And I had to, like, go in and sort of say, look, we're not doing it. We're not doing it now. And Ruth doesn't want to do it now. And uh, anyway, and then it was fine. You know. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. We have my sister, she had like the umbilical cord from her neck three times. Mm -hmm. And no one knows how she did that because she was a huge baby. She had literally no space to move around. And within a day, she was just like, what was happening? Well, I guess um, that's where the hospital comes in. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The you hospital got some... and just the, the delivery, like, she was suffering because of the doctor's decision. She was, they needed to do a scan to see, because it, now it, was, I it was going to be a C-section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a C-section, but someone, like, started inducing them to the Yeah, that's another thing. It's, it's, you don't care scary. how much lamming you've done, you're not doing a C-section at home with a scalpel, are you, Dex? <laughs> <laughs> Play-Doh knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Yeah, it's going to be a C-section. Yeah, I think it's going to be a C-section. Teeth. Ah, teeth-section. Well, yeah. Oh. Oh, it's the thing is, all institutions seem to have some paranoia. No, it's okay. I'm just going out to see, right? Reginald Rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have a couple of glass. Oh, yeah. Clicky Watchroom. Um, oh, yeah, just. Oh, yeah, just. Oh, yeah,
Joy Broadway musical. Love Joy. Jam and Nick when he came over. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm done on the chocolate. Can't do any more. It makes me. Uh, it's giving me a sugar. Out. Sugar high. <laughs> I'm not trying to play the um, 
because when you witness it, well, you don't want anyone, yeah. and they offer it. And right. Like, oh, it's oh, yeah, we'll we, we'll 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 yeah. have nothing to do with that yeah. time. Yeah. Because we got married at 11 o'clock in the morning. Right. And they were like, yeah, sure. I mean, we can do it. We don't have anything to do. Fab. I was going to say, my, my sister got married in Iceland, you know, unbeknown to any of us, her and her partner went over to Iceland, found two witnesses over there. Uh, and my, yeah, my brother and law got married in a, a, a penguin tie, you know, a tie with penguins on it. <laughs> Not that they have penguins in Iceland, I don't think, but... What, uh, a, what a place to get married. Yeah. This very beautiful. I've always there. wanted to go to, uh, to Iceland. That's still not been. You won't regret it. Mm. It's, it's mind blowing. It's mm. just, I think it's the most different place I've been in my life. Right, right. It's just different. Yeah, yeah. And most of the things you can do is just like nature related. Yeah. yeah. And definitely go on Northern Lights, you said, yes. which is yes. the most mind-blowing yeah. thing. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm keen to see. I've seen in my life, yeah. yeah. I bet I would love to see them. I, I was reading that you can actually see them in Scotland. Like, really nice Yeah, Scotland. yeah, you, you can from time to time, yeah. Well, and <sighs> people, people have said, that, you know, certain times of year when the atmosphere is just right, as far down as sort of Hulk, you can see, you know, some, you know, on the distant horizon. But yeah, yeah, they're, they're on my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're amazing. And one week before we arrived, they were, in, in Iceland, they were really mad. Like, they were all the way down to Reykjavik. And oh, they were right. actually turning off the lights. Yeah. So they're out of the map. Yeah. And the Northern Lights were in the city. Right. Oh, we oh, yeah. we arrived like two days too late to yeah. see that. Right. It was, but it was totally worth it. When we arrived, there was a storm coming. So they said that it was highly likely that we didn't get to see loads of it. Yeah. So basically they caught this, I don't know if it was like a radar or, and they, you, you hop on the bus. And the bus driver is chasing them. Right. Oh, right. You're chasing the location. Yeah. So you can actually be driving for around two hours before you see anything. Yeah. And that's what happened to us. Ah. <laughs> the bus picks you up around 11 o'clock at night. And then just takes you to a point yeah. where the northern lights are. Right. Right. But it um, might be two in the morning. Or yeah. later than yeah. that, yeah, it might be really late. Right. But we saw them at around one. Okay. And it was like, okay, so it's here. Mm. Calm down the bus now. It was cloudy and the sky was just like the wind was blowing. Right. It was really cold. And just, you know, the moved the, the, the clouds moved a little bit. And then just the sky literally opened. And we saw them. Fantastic. And it was just like that, me huh? and my friend were just giggling. Northern lights. Northern lights. Yeah. We were just giggling like ha ha. We didn't know what to do. Um yeah, but then the wind kept on blowing and yes. just like closed down again. It was just like three, four minutes. Oh, and it was like, alright, let's all go back. And the the guide was telling us that sometimes you just hang out there. Oh, so when did you go there then? 
I was there in 2016, I think 16, 17, 16. So I went when I was when when I was a teenager. Yeah, how how was that like? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's just really incredible really, landscape there. I know, I know, I know. It's very smart. Smart, smart. Someone I know told me that it's, it's and it's also very very safe. So he he was just hitchhiking with some friends, and mm. they just went to very amazing places. Yeah, I'm going to like an, an underground cavern that was all heat, you know, like the water was hot. Yes. Volcanically heated and swimming yes. like in this cave, you know, it's quite, I mean, they probably wouldn't be allowed to do it now, but, and if you dive right down, it got really too hot. It smelt of sulfur a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they were telling us that um, the place that we were staying, that, because we were in an Airbnb, like in someone's basement. So this guy was telling us that the hot springs, just like thermal pools, are a gathering point. Like if you have a business meeting, you would have it there. Wow. Because it's like that's what they do. They they go to the these hot springs and drink chocolate. That's what that's how people yeah. that's how hang out. That because sounds very I think I don't know if alcohol is banned or just like super expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. But people don't, they don't usually drink in their everyday life. So what they do is just drink chocolate. Right, yeah. And go in the hot springs. That's like, how do they hang out? Great. Yeah, I'd put your bar now. Me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I remember going there, it was, I think it must be about, it must have been about June when I went. And I remember being in a jacuzzi, you know, like a, it was outside, and it was like the the hot water, and it, and it started snowing. In Mexico? No, in, no, in Iceland. In Iceland. Oh, you went? Yeah. And it was like, you know, the weather was, because it, it never got uh, dark, of course, so it was really varied, the weather, you know, it was really hot one day, and then it was snowing another day, and, and I went up onto the, and I slept on top of a glacier, you know, like a glacier. Mm -hmm. I slept out, out just out on the floor outside all night, and uh, it's, you know, like yeah, I mean, on this massive fun. red glass, <laughs> just with a mat on the there. That sounds really amazing. And, and really dangerous as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, just actually, another, another thing is, I remember, <laughs> I remember crossing this stream, Meltwater stream. There were like four of us, and we went across, and nearly, very, very nearly, got washed away. I got really into trouble for doing it from the teacher. Would you have died? Oh, yeah, because it was like freezing cold. I it was so program. strong, it just nearly knocked you over, you know. I, I saw a program on like extreme deaths of, of Americans. At yeah. This party had like uh, found some in, in, in a glacier, they'd, they'd found like a a bit that had fallen away, but it was like sheltered from the wind. So they set up camp there. And then uh, I didn't realise it, but you're thinking about it, so exactly right. The, the the layers are actually very different quality snows. So one of the layers gave way, this massive slab of you know solid ice went through their camp decapitated in the morning. On that <laughs> end, it's like, it's like, oh, what right. a way to go. Yeah, right. Wow. Oh. That's where we're all. Well, I don't think yeah. the castle was quite <laughs> as dangerous as that, but. Yeah. Well, it was it's a really sad story in a way, because the chap who used to organise the trip, it was when I was at Cross Hospital. Yeah. And the chap who used to organise the, the trip was like a real character. And, uh, but anyway, the, the story about him was that he got sort of prosecuted in the end for doing something. Bizarre. I think he was like. Um, I'm intrigued. His. I think he got. He got to uh, images out of that must have come from sort of pornography. Oh. But then he superimposed some of the female students on oh. like, head onto the body. <laughs> but I don't. I mean, that's only the story that I heard. So I don't know. If that's true or not. But. Innovative. But, I mean, it was sort of like. It was, I mean, but when you knew the chap, and he was a real centre, pushing but, the boundaries of Photoshop. Yeah, but, yeah, well, but, but, but I mean, he did such a lot of good things for the for the for the school when he was there. It's like yeah. you think, oh, 
Well, it was a bit stupid, like but it really warranting porno in cups. But I don't know. I mean, you never know. I mean, with these things, it might have been someone playing a trick on them. You never know. I mean, it's sort of or trying to set him up. I mean, you don't right, know. Right, that, that Brass Eye episode where he's like, "Is this is this wrong?" And they're like, in in they in, 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 in superimposed a head onto a kit and like a dog with a big erection. <laughs> No, that's not wrong. But what if I switch the heads around? They're like, yes, now that's wrong. Oh, yeah, well, it's obviously a bit bizarre. But, but you don't know the context. You might have just been having a joke. It was really, you know, really sort of red roll. Somebody might have done it and set him up. And you don't know, do you? I mean, sort of that sound a bit. But the thing is, he was, you know, he's like a real character. And a lot of people have a lot of respect for him. Well. It's so sad to hear that story. It's like, oh, you stupid idiot. Well, it's just, you know, yeah. Because he used to organise a trip practically single-handedly, you know, and like such a My mate got fired from Nottingham City Council for downloading porn and, and wanking in the office. Is <laughs> this streaming? Was it one of those? Oh yeah, watch it. You've got to watch what he said. Was it an open plan office? Uh, yeah, it was. Well, <laughs> it was after work. And she, worked, and she worked with vulnerable adults as well, processing vulnerable adults, so... Yes. Well, the thing is, humans do make mistakes, don't they? I mean, it's just, you know, you've got to have some way of dealing with it. You can't just sort of pretend it never happened. You know? That's what's wrong with this idea of like the perfect world, you know, like this sort of like idea that you can genetically modify and use drugs and all that sort of thing and yeah. make the human person perfect. Well, that's been the eternal, you know, that's not, goal of everybody. That's not, that's not the human. But you're never going to do it. All you're going to do is make some new. Well, you will when you die, because then you return to that to, to, to what's perfect, don't you? Which is non-being. Well, beyond being <coughs> non-being, then you return to what's perfect. But you're not. Well, you here. don't know, though, do you? I mean, no, you're not here. We might be all on a sort of, you know, like a loop where we, you know, we've got twenty or thirty different lives to get through. Yeah. And each time you've got a different problem to face, and that's why we're all a bit different. I think that's definitely what happens, but I think that we always come back, no matter what. I think that even if you resolve your karma, I don't think that you, that's it's like, oh, well, you completed it, you're not coming back. I think you always come back, because it's the opposite of not being, isn't it? Like, you would give, it, you would give that all up just for a chance to be here in the first place, even to experience all the suffering, even to experience all the horrible stuff. Otherwise, it's just, what? Nothing. Yeah, but there might be different stages of things, you know. So Maybe. You go on to like being different types of chocolate, totally different flavour. Then yeah. <laughs> you might be ras- you might be raspberry ripple by then. <laughs> the, the ultimate stage is just like perpetual. Cops for a rock. Chocolate and coffee and everything. Like that. Yeah. No, well that's it. But then you wouldn't appreciate it. Or well, maybe that's like hell when you get everything you want and you realise it's... Maybe it's, a, <laughs> maybe it's a typo and it's actually a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And heaven is a typo, it's Devon. <laughs> Devon and Hull. Devon and Hull, yeah. That's a good name for a CD. Devon and Hull. Sounds like a prog rock band. <laughs> yeah. You can be in it with that hat. <laughs> Yeah. You need a flute, Devon and Devon. It's Devon and Hull. Devon and Hull. Between Devon and Hull. What is it between Devon and Hull then? Commentary. Commentary. This must be how bad it's sort of made. Coventry. Coventry. Coventry sounds a bit like purgatory. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah. That's suspicious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Coventry's, is Coventry a little bit like Purgatory as well? <laughs> it's the West Midlands, is, is it? It's somewhere you, well, you get, get sent. Why do you get sent to Coventry? You get sent to Coventry. Why do they say that though? I don't know. I don't know. Really? Is that you get sent to Coventry? Have you not yeah. heard that expression? No, is there a prison there or something? No, no it means that you didn't, nobody talks to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you get sent to Coventry. Coventry. Yeah. It means yeah. the what? It means that no one talks to you. Yeah, people stop talking to you. I I've never heard that before. Have you not? No. Nah. Maybe it's a. I, we used to say it in Nantes. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So we're not allowed to say it now. Yeah. 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 The field of plans. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, there must there must be a real. I mean, there must be a story from that. For that. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's not just based on everybody suddenly just like people in the country. Yeah. Who else is from Mansfield? I know from Lincoln. Jan, he is from Mansfield, isn't he? Do you remember Jan? Do you remember me, Jan? I don't know. Do you remember Alan, that. who I used to live with, with the dreads? Do you remember? Did you never know Alan? No. No. That's good. Guy Woodson. Yeah. Do you remember Guy? Yeah. He's from Mansfield. Right. Yeah. But I didn't know him over there. How did you end up in Lincoln? Uh, did you got your job? I was working at Brampton and when, when I was first working at Brampton, I lived in Redford and I hated it. Fuck Redford. And then I did my, did my training in Leeds, so when I finished, you know, with the job at Brampton, I was like, I'm not going back to live in Redford. And I knew one person in Lincoln. Yeah. And I visited once just to go to a, a stag night on the barge pub on the Brayford. Oh, no you know, we'd had, a, we'd had a, you know, a reasonable night and I thought, well, well, I remember that. Is it still there? 1990. 1990? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So I came and just knew one person uh, who I worked with and never really socialised much with that. And now you found my own friends. Now you're strutting out in the castle with a tartan, <laughs> and that's a tartan strap in your camera. I feel, yeah, well I've lived here now longer than I was ever in Mansfield, so it feels properly like home. Yeah. Uh, and virtually everybody I know is here, apart from a couple of friends back in You still got your knots, you're not in your accent, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 What? Okay. Yeah, you, have you still got your knot in your accent, sir? <laughs> She's been practicing. She's been practicing. <laughs> he, makes, he makes me say something sometimes. Sometimes I do it. Go on, flex your knots, you know, your muscles. I don't know how to, what to say. Well, you know a few things. What do I, what do I say? I'm your teacher, sir. It's a knots, it's a knots speak. Yeah, some, yeah, months food. Yeah. 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 Got any brat will be slang, Sam? <laughs> the brat will be slang, yeah. Then you'll be sent to Coventry. Sent to Coventry, yeah, fucking hell. I do. <laughs> I do have some words. I just need a slang. Rattlebee, not Jesus Christ. Rattlebee. I don't know what the name is, dude. Rattlebee. Rattus. 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 Got the rattle broadcasting card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need a log. You need to get a log. The log box. The log bike. There's a bike there. You'll find it. Yeah, it sounds like some Devon and Devon and Noel. Uh, no, no. You just turn. It. I did that. You have to lift it, it up. You locked it. So, oh. and you push it up to, no, yeah. push it. There you go, I did exactly the same thing. Yeah. It's the handle, because you have to sort of go the other way with it. Are you people seem to follow me, are you? Are you people seem to follow me? Devon and Hull. You get so much Between Devon and Hull. Between Devon and Hull. Love us or hate us. Love us or hate us. Headlining Equinox Festival, 75 hour samba. So, so yeah. Uh, featuring the world's tiniest, the world's tiniest, um, marimba. Like a flea, like a flea circus. Look at me. Yeah, flea, uh, flea band. Flea band. The brat will be flea band. 
That we see him, he got a flea that's so bad. I think fleas have been terribly persecuted. I think so as well. He's not at all bad. He's not at all bad. What are Please. I read, I read something about people eating sea fleas. Sea fleas. Sea fleas. Sea fleas. Yeah, I, read some, I just read something about someone eating fleas. What, sea fleas, fleas and eat them? That's like the seafood and eat it. Yeah, seafood. Do you want to see some. Do you want to sound like seafood? Another joke. We chew up on food and you ask someone, do you like seafood? And they're like, yeah. And then you're like, seafood. <laughs> Don't teach your kids that. <laughs> Anybody hungry? I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit hungry for something other than sugar. It's not hunger. I the only thing I got is Spanish sausage in there. Oh, that sounds. I meant. I meant to go to the shop. You see, I picked it. Girls, I I didn't. That sounds good. I must admit, I did see the Spanish sausage and it looked. Yeah, well, just the knife on there, just get a bit. Leave, leave me a bit. Leave me a bit of food. Got a bit of Spanish sausage, so. Oh, I just leave, even want a tiny bit just to. Uh... Yeah, at home. It's not, um, it's not like anything, it's just from the co op. Looks nice. Do you want a bit? No, I'm alright. I'm just going to have a little bit now. I used to get really good ones in Spain, and the food there was so much nicer than here. Oh, what's that? Food here is alright. It's not so bad at all. I was telling Alex that the quality of food here in the UK is actually pretty decent. Mm. Very decent. Yeah, well, it's, there's a good lot of choice. I mean, it's like. It's just sort of becoming not much choice of places to buy it. And I mean, they used to have some lovely big markets in Barcelona. You could get some really good stuff, but there's no sort of markets have all gone, you know, so it's all supermarkets now. I mean, there are... It's probably different in Nottingham, you see. Yeah. Around here, it's just getting to be a nightmare because it's all completely controlled by the co op in Tesco's. I mean, the best stuff I was getting recently was uh, at the Hens or the car boot sale. It was like some, um, it was like a, a van. For, I think it was. I can't remember where she said she was from. Uh, Latvia or somewhere like that. But it had all these meats and things on there. It was just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, we got some good some of that stuff in nuts. Like, right, tell yeah. you what, though, this chorizo is much better than Mexican chorizo. <laughs> Without a doubt, Mexican chorizo is it's nice, but it's not like this. It's different. Mm. It's, let them, it's lower grade. Have you ever had like soft Spanish chorizo? Not this like hard. Cured. Yeah. yeah. It's not cured. It's. It's like soft. It's soggy. Yeah, you sort of buy it in a slice. No, no, it's no, it's. You're gonna eat it raw. You have to fry it. Oh, you right. You get really sick if you. If yeah, you it's, like, it's very low grade meat. Right, yeah. Um, it's kind of nice. That's just, it reminds me of going cycling. I used to do a bit of cycling, or I had friends who were into cycling. We, did a, we were cycling in um, in France, and we did a really long ride, and I was and, um, so hungry, went into this French supermarket and bought this sausage. And then. Uh, just ate it all, <laughs> and then we and then we're like so hungry, like oh, and then looking at the packet, I realised it was raw. <laughs> I mean, nobody was ill or anything, but no. <laughs> just like so, because we've done like a really long ride. I mean, they're really nutters, really. It was about eighty miles or something, and really hilly, and the all our kit on and that. And then and it was just so funny that we ate it all, and then we're like, we should have cut that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now 
you know, when you go to Mexico. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I went to the Sri Lankan place <laughs> with Ben. Have I told you about that? I went to a Sri Lankan place with my mate Ben and they served us this all our food. And uh, I... <laughs> They gave us like, there were like these pots. They had like, I thought it was mango chutney or sauce or something. And I mixed it into the food and I was eating it. And the fucking waiter came along. He's like, what are you doing? That's the dessert. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I started stirring this like mango, this like mango Kool-Aid. Like, it was like tearing into my curry. <laughs> There were like two separate desserts and I put all of it in. I just mixed all of the food together. Oh. This guy came over so offended. He was like, and he, he was like what are you doing? That's a dessert, you idiot. Do you know what I mean? Proper angry at me. Really? Oh. I was like, it tastes all right. But yeah, he was a bit he was a bit rude about it, actually. But it, it was funny. It was quite funny. <laughs> but he was... He was he was angry. He was just like. I bet that guy still sorry. tells that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He probably spent hours slaving away when just right. well, exactly it's just right. Like a, it's just like a little pot. It's just like a little pot, but it all came. Well, Toronto food is a bit different to Indian food, right? So it's like smaller dishes, and like I just thought, yeah, that's like a dip or something like that. Like, and he, but he just came over and he was just like. <laughs> That's the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking And tough. it really sounds like you do something coming to the table and mixing it all together. <laughs> I didn't know. It's like the first time I went and got Nigerian food in Brixton Market and like we started to eat it with a knife and fork and like everyone laughing like people coming out and taking photos, they were just like, they were just like, you went to eat it with your hands, like no right. one ever has eaten it with a fucking knife and fork. And what was that? Nigerian food. Like Efro Riro and, and um, pounded yam, so like cow stomach, waffle, which is fucking, it sounds disgusting, but it's fucking lovely. And like, something like spinach, right. made a spicy sauce. Right. Um, Bit trite, and then big, uh, big bit of pounded yam, and you wash your hands, and then you just get the pounded yam and just dip it in the food, basically. Nice. Yeah, like with most African food. I mean, in Africa, actually, it's like Ethiopian food. We eat a lot. Tell you what, if you come to Nottingham on a Saturday, in, in between twelve and two, there is an Ethiopian store that do really great stuff. They do Ooh, these right. things called. It's like, it's like any gluten free. Is it good vegetarian stuff? Yeah, yes. I think it is gluten free actually. They do these yeah. like fermented sour pancakes. Right. And there's like lots of like dali sort of things. Yeah. But the way you eat them is you just get a bit of the pancake and then you just you do it with your hands. You wouldn't use a knife and fork. But in, in Ethiopia, it's very common to feed other people. So like if you, if the closer you are to someone, you feed it, you actually put it in their mouth. Right. And you, it's quite common to do that with strangers as well. It's like, you know, you're using your hands, but you're also putting it in other people's mouths wow. or something like that. And it's just, uh, yeah. Not very COVID friendly. But, uh, <laughs> there's also a restaurant, an uh, Ethiopian restaurant. In, uh, Not in. Yeah, I've tried making some of the Ethiopian stuff up before, but it's hard to get the spice mix right. You can get it Berber spice, it's called a thing. Is it called Berber spice? I don't know, maybe it's called something else. But this this food is. It's really nice it's anyway. Really nice. And the coffee, the coffee they make as well. The Ethiopian coffee. Yeah, they do it in this big weird pot. And tastes like there's something like cardamom in it. Right. Yeah. Uh, they don't use any milk or anything like that. It's like a short. Tastes like a a very fruity espresso. Right. But it's lovely anyway. It's not. Is, is it a percolator that they make it? It's like it's a bit like how they do Turkish coffee, but it's not in that little thing. It's like a big. It's just like a big jug. Do you know what I mean? Like a big clay jug with a spout. Yeah. So it's it's not anything fancy, but the way the coffee comes out, it's a bit it's a bit like a mocha pot. It's that consistency. 
but it's very. It tastes like cardamom. It's very. Really yeah, it's very it's fruity really and very full body. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a way that a mocha pot. Well, it could be. It depends on what sort of coffee you use. But mm. mocha pots can be used certain type of coffee. So yeah. It had a complexity that was more like an espresso. Right. right. Don't know how she fucking does it. I want to ask her. But they put it on a tin foil ring. Then, like, so they put yeah. it on the stove. They put the tin foil ring, and then they put the mm. the coffee pot. Yeah. But yeah. Saturdays we walk down. They do stuffed chili as well, don't they? Like oh, big, that thing is delicious. Like, it's not spicy it's delicious. chili. But the, they, oh, they, it they, sounds they, nice. They stuff it. With, yeah, they um, stuff it with like some sort of more chili. <laughs> yeah, different, yeah, a different chili. A different type of sauce. Right. It's a bit, right. it's very savoury and it's slightly sweet. Yeah. It's delicious. It's delicious. That chilli is wow. delicious. Wow. Yeah, it's good. It's like baby food. I love it. It's like yeah, the Ethiopian food. food is a bit baby food. <laughs> mm. it, like, like dal. Like everything's that kind of um, consistency. Mm. I have to find out if injury is. It, well, I'd love to try stuff that was, but I'm not really, I mean, I can't eat out either because, you know, the gluten yeah. sort of thing. I'm not bored going I'll have a look, because there might, there might even be a way to make those injuries. They don't have Mexican food. Most Mexican food is gluten free. Yeah, yeah. corn. Right. Corn. It's corn. Everything is corn based. Oh, yeah. yeah. So most of it is gluten free. Tortilla. Mm. We, could, we could do that when we come here next, if we can. We could bring um we should we could do a barbecue. We could bring some um bring the sauce here plate, couldn't we? And we could do yeah. some. Do yeah, some well that'd be good because I mean a lot of the stuff that's you know, because not much choice places to go around here, so you end up going to the co op or something like that. And they a lot of their stuff they use like uh, gluten you know, they use barley extracts and stuff like that. I'll tell you what's flavouring. So things do have it in even though it's not meant, you know, you wouldn't think it would. Just the, the, the corn tortillas don't have them in the Morrison's one, do they? The, I think the fact that they do them is so that people can buy them, mm. them free. Them. Yeah, I always check with uh, tortilla chips. Yeah, but, yeah, but, the but, supermarkets. But, but Morrison's yeah. now have, tor as in soft tortillas. Oh, right. Corn tortillas. Right. No wheat at all. Okay. Right. And that's proper because, you know, you do get flour tortillas in Mexico, but they're not very... Mm. They're not common for regular torti tor tortillas, the soft tortillas. Mm. Mm. You know, they're not like these big things. Like, you know. No, the ones, the ones you get with your food and that. Like the, this sour pancake thing that he's saying about Ethiopian food. We do the same thing. Okay. Like you have a kilogram of tortillas in the center of the table when you're having food. Nice. Just grab one, roll it, just dip it in whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Just like break it and just yeah. grab the food with the tortilla. Mm. And it's like a very common thing. Right. And, then, and then you can do wow. something called tostadas, which is like you get the tortilla and you um, you like fry, you put it in a pan until the moisture comes out of it. And, and it gets like it gets quite hard. Crispy Same and make hard. tortilla chips, okay. right? Mm. But it's a bit different. And then you spread mayo, you put lettuce on it, you basically put, put anything, put lime on, on it, yeah. anything. It's just like there is this right. place in the, in the market, Coyoacan market. Tostadas are famous. They're just like this tall. Mm. So this tiny fragile tortilla is just holding like 250 grams of whatever you decided to put on top. Right. But yeah, Alex had the. They usually garnish with lettuce, like. Yeah, you know, lettuce. Fried lettuce yeah. and some. I suppose. Some yeah. very cheap cheese. It's Panella. like really bad quality. It's like, it's like panella. <laughs> it's like really right. bad quality pizza. That's what makes it. That's what makes it taste authentic. Like right? this sort of. And loads, yeah. loads of salsa. <laughs> That's uh, the trip, yeah. Yeah, like have, like have an arrow sauce. And, yeah. Oh, I'm feeling hungry right now. <laughs> have a bit of sausage. It's, it works, it's fatty. And it's yeah. Fatty. No, I really like that. I mean, I like to get more stuff like that. I mean, there used to be so many different things like that in Spain. Well, you can also, just, you can order order some stuff on the internet as well, like tortillas. Mm. Oh, nice. We've got blue corn. Online, front line. Yeah. We've got blue corn as well. Like, so we make the tortillas out of that. Mm. Oh, and right. they're blue. Blue? What makes them blue then? 
The corn is the corn is, blue. is that there there are many many different types of corn. Yeah. Right. The most consumed in Mexico is white corn and blue corn. That's what Mexican tortillas look very different from any other tortilla anywhere else. Right. Because they're not yellow. The yellow corn is the most consumed elsewhere. Right. And we right. we, we do white. Yeah. White oh. and blue. blue. Great. But you go to markets and you can get red, you can get black, purple. Purple. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's just like the breed of um, Yeah. Blue. Oh, well, probably because it's hotter. I mean, there's not a lot of it. Tell them about her with the coche. Uh, there's this, like... This shit is fucking Yeah, great. this fungus that grows out of the corn. And it ruins the crops. It ruins the crops, Makes basically. them swell up. Exactly. Right. Just Bit like ergot. Yeah, just but not, not, it's not going to make you trip out. Right. No. And that's called with the coche. And it's fucking delicious. They basically just oh really? You can eat it. Then. Yeah, it's about it's like and it's fucking delicious. It's like it's Very you, have, you have it on tacos and mushrooms and stuff, and it tastes a little bit. What does it taste like? It's like a just tastes a bit. It's like mu halfway between a mushroom and corn. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it tastes a bit like corn, but it's more. Can you show? Take a picture of what you're because it looks. I don't know where my phone is actually. Uh, maybe online, but probably. Because <sighs> the ergot's quite a weird stuff. My mate went to that, really that good, Italian really. island recently <laughs> where, in I think a certain amount of time, I can't remember how long it, ago it was. Um, do you know Ben Clark? Do you remember Sam Clark? Yeah. Sam Clark, who was in acting. Yes. Yeah. His brother, Ben. Did you okay. ever meet him? I oh, I think I did meet him, but I don't know. Yeah, he's he so went. Cool. He, this the pictures. <laughs> he went to this island <laughs> recently, and apparently in the I think it's the 18th century. Wow, that's cool. The, the, the corn was. Um, and it's like black. Uh, had ah. Looks blue, but when you when you. Like, so like the whole cut, the whole island. They used to cook it with it. Corn, it looks black. Sick. Right. It's a little uh, bit like uh, as if you were just years. like. Frying right. or just black pudding. Because we also eat a lot of black pudding. Right. Instead Hell, of having it round, we cook it with people making jalapeno, like orange juice, pineapple juice, shitloads of onions, and you just like cut it very nice. You didn't know about it. Right. And it's delicious. Oh, right. We call it moron. I think ergot poisoning is mm. not very nice, by the way. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's because I missed all that sort of food. I mean, I know because I went to, I mean, I went to out with a girl from Barcelona for a bit. Looks like that. No, oh, right. and you oh, really got to love all the food over there. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. good. It's very good. It's very delicious. Mm. Well, it's making me hungry. Look, let me show you. Big language. Yeah, yeah well, that's the trouble we're sort of losing our traditional making that's stuff. That's the point. Oh, right. And that's the thing growing out of it. Is that? And that's the meat. No. Actually, you know, uh, David came around earlier. <laughs> He's been making apple pies. That's it. Oh, He's giving them away to people, people right? If you ask. So funny, because I never would have imagined he would do apple pies. Oh, well, there's really really like well, quite, quite a lot of apples here, and he likes, so likes like, picking them. And, uh, and he likes, he quite likes cooking them. <laughs> yeah, he's just made. I mean, I I can't eat them because of the pastry. But yeah. He's giving them away to people. <laughs> Yeah, that's, oh, that's great, because really normally the apples just exactly. get... Exactly, it is delicious. Well, I won't say they get wasted because the birds eat them, but we don't sort of pick them. Is he around here quite a lot, then? Yeah. Well, you, like well, you see him quite often, because he comes and does a bit of work oh, yeah. here. Yeah. Just like, basically, it's that. Keep on top of it. Naturally, it's going to have some, like, corn. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased he's doing... Oh, what's that bit of taste off? It's really good. It's a bit mushy. It tastes a bit mushy. It tastes a bit... Mushy peas. Wet. Okay. It's, a bit it's like... pretty savoury as well. Mm. It tastes. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty weird. <laughs> it's very it's good. really fucking good with, with like cheese. Mm. Mm. Right. right. Yeah, it's one of one of the things. That tell you what else is a staple in Mexico, which I miss more than anything. Crickets. Fucking hell, they're good. Crickets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like to try that. They're really good. Mm. She brought me those back. They they got taken by customs. 
Oh, God. Custer's men really like them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, they are, that is, that is a tasty thing to put on anything. Right, yeah. It's just, they taste yeah. amazing. It's it's, whack with Yeah, like a mole with crickets in it. Oh, like yeah. Crickets on pizza. Well, actually, I mean, insects would be a good thing to eat, really, because it would grow them, really. Yeah. And they're like, they're like superfoods. Yeah, and also they'll they're feed on what, you know, waste, really. Yeah. Yeah, they're super, super precise. Uh, there was this place I used to go with my friends, which is like a, like a hipster bar. It was called Madre Malinti. And they used to serve hibiscus flower tacos mm. with whack with crickets on top of it. Right. And Fuck they were yeah. the delicious. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Nice. We went to a, there's, there's a pizza initiative in, in um, uh, Mexico City called Pizza. And it was run by a group who employed homeless people, and with their wages, they they help them uh, pay for their own apartment. Settle down, basically. Wow. Yeah, it's called Pixar. Right. And um, fuck, that place was amazing. They did one of the good one of the things about it was they did blue corn pizza, so like right. a blue corn pizza base. That was gluten-free. Wow, yeah. Gluten-free, yeah. obviously. Oh, I've got to go to Mexico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With cheese, uh, like black bean sauce. Mm-hmm. Right. And crickets. Right. Mm. And, the, and what the fuck, oh, man? What was the stuff that they served? The, the corn kernels. Oh, they were just like corn kernels with the, uh, like... Like salt. Salt. Smoked, smoked and... salt. Like. Yeah, it was in something like smoked... And, uh, salt and chili, but it was just like right. Mm. Like, mm. Mentioned on that, and it was just like something they gave you, just like snack to share. Mm. For a drink, you get uh, sorrel, hibiscus, water, or orchata, orchata, or tamarind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And bloody hell, that tamarind water, man! Mm. You should make some tamarind water. Yeah, let's get some tamarind. Mm. Really good. Well, I mean, it'd be great to do an event here where you had like exotic foods and meditation and noise and stuff. Mm. Do it there. That'd be good. Pretty could have like a ticket. I mean, what you could do is if you're going to do one, you could sort of have a ticket that you had to buy beforehand so you know there's enough people coming. Yeah. But you could keep it to a set level. Um, and then you would just have it, you know, not like have the loads, but just a few. Make the ticket. You think, you think 50 people would be... Yeah, he wouldn't want more than that. No, he wouldn't, no. And if you could set the ticket at the right price, people would pay it. I mean, you could cover your costs and, you know... Why don't you put on a Mexican festival? So. It could have a Mexican aspect. I mean, the thing is, that I think you've got to sort of mix things together to make it interesting until you get For sure, people yeah. together. Because that seems to be what's happening is like everybody, especially on the internet, is everybody sort of just goes to what they know, and there's not much mixing of groups. No, exactly. Like, that's not very healthy, really. So. I think it would be fun. Because we did like, I mean, I've done like Open Farm Sunday and stuff like that, and got like a hundred people here. Well, um, what was that? How did you advertise that? Just, um, well, it's an NFU sort of thing. National Farmers Union, so they do publicise the day. Yeah. But they have a web page now. I just we just put our address on it, and you know I couldn't believe how many people came. We had sheep shearing and jumble sale and craft store and all that sort of thing. And then we did have music in the evening, but of course everybody left who was interested in the open farm Sunday. Yeah. But, I mean, it's quite nice. You, well, get... you could advertise the music separately. You could have that sort of. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to do it, but it's just like a, you know, I need people to sort of help who want to help and organise it because I fucking can't do it all on my own. There's too much to do, yeah. But there were, I mean, the Weird Woods ones we did were really good, but there weren't that many people at them. How many came? Well, I mean, maximum, you know, about 20 people. And that includes some of the people who are, like, doing stuff. 
Did everyone come? No, a lot of people just came through the day. So. I think I think that's the thing. If you do an event, you've got to get enough people who are going to stay over to make it work. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth doing. But. Oh dear. Anyway, I suppose I better think about going to bed sometime. What? Uh, do, what do you want? Where do you want to sleep then? There's a. I mean, there is a bed up there. With a, I put a clean sheet on it. Um, yeah, we do that. If you don't mind that, I mean, the duvet's not clean, but if you're all right with that. Yeah, that's fine. I was getting cosy here. <laughs> I think, well, I think Andy's in here. Yeah. He usually kips out in here, so you might as well go and have a, have a bed of that. I'll show you where it is in a minute. Um, Thanks, man. You can just go in the one. So. Thank you. Well, we listen to these womb sounds that Andy's. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still actually, I keep forgetting, it's still streaming, although there's nobody listening. But, uh, we'll switch it off in a minute. How long have you been streaming? Four, four hours or something. something like that, yeah. I mean, the only thing that's interesting is it does, it holds the video for a few days before it drops it. So we sometimes get, I, mean, I think the last one did about 10 people, didn't it? <coughs> but it's kind of just, in, you know, it's just an, an interesting sort of thing to do when you know that nobody's going to be listening. Yeah. Sort of, um, I don't know how many other people do the same sort of thing, but can you go, can you beat the record for the least number of viewers over a year? You get, if you get less than zero, you win. Yeah. That's the goal, get less than zero. Because it's interesting because it gives you like a summary. It tells you exactly how many people logged on. And, you know, some people log on for like two minutes and then they switch off. <laughs> so you know they're not really interested. Some good womb sounds going on, aren't they? Making me feel really tired. It's a good old loop. Thank you, God. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Nice. I like the sound of that turning off. Yeah. <laughs> Not because it stopped, but just. It does actually have a bit of a tail off, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. A little. A little fizzle out. But there's no volume put on the machine itself. Like a Jetsons car. You know they made the sound in the Jetsons, the car. You know the car's speeding up like it's like a sports whistle. It's pitched right down. Oh really? Yeah. I never knew that. It's a what speed it's like that. Sports whistle. Ah, like a whistle with a P in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slowed right down. Or sped up. Oh, actually, no, it is slowed down. It's slowed down. And I, ch I tested it out. Got a whistle sound from the Oh, yeah. Slowed down. I'm like, well, that's the Jetsons car. Oh, oh wait for one. Yeah. Confirmed. I'm sorry. 
just as cut. Yeah. <laughs> sound like a drill. Yeah, those are some good sounds. You could put a pot on the voltage. That would be good, yeah. Yeah. I've always, I've always tempted to do that on a lot of things. Cause different, uh, different voltage sounds for things. Well, right, I think uh, I'm going to switch this off now. Switch it off. Switch it off. Is it still actually, I mean it's incredible uh, how it sort of keep, doesn't drop out. Right. Is that the fire? Mm. Right. It's a good rumble, isn't it? Yeah. It's a right bass. Fire dog. Uh, can't say that I've noticed. Oh, we've got a new follower. <laughs> right, end of stream That's now. Important, Anything <laughs> anyone wants? <laughs> Taste Anything Sorry. anyone wants to say before we end it? Uh, night night. Night night. Smash that like button. Alright, three, two, one, All go. Right. Go offline. How was your stream? Yes. Wet. <laughs> Alright, goodbye, one viewer. And no follower. <laughs> What's the view of the follower? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>